Let's speak with Diego Naranjo. He's in Brussels. He's a senior policy advisor on European digital rights. Thanks so much for speaking to us. First, help us better understand now who wins and who loses under this law. Well, in, under this law, uh, who wins is uh, the usual suspects, uh, meaning the rights holders who have been lobbying heavily uh, to make this happen, and also the collecting societies. And who loses is the, the entire EU population, the 500 million individuals who are going to see their rights uh, restricted. They're going to see less uh, legal content online. They're going to have less access to culture. And generally, they're going to see each piece of their content, each piece of message, video, audio, and they, they upload to the internet being scanned and filtered out by these big tech monopolies. I mean, was this the best you think the EU could actually do uh, to protect copyrights? Uh, of course not. We've been saying from the actually three or four years ago, uh, we had a positive agenda to modernize copyright, to make it fit for the 21st century. And during these three and a half years, there were uh, better versions of Article 13, so versions of the Copyright Directive without the upload filters. But unfortunately, they all have been uh, rejected in, the, in all of the stages of the legislative procedure. And yesterday, we actually lost uh, the vote for five votes only, for the five votes difference. And in fact, it turned out uh, over the course of the evening last night that 10 MEPs had uh, pushed the wrong button. And we could actually have been able to vote on this, but uh, the, because of these 10 people who uh, pressed the wrong button, we were unable to even have the debate on, on removing upload filters from the EU or not. OK. Uh, can something be done about that? And I mean, uh, help us understand those that didn't push the wrong button and voted against uh, what you feel was right, what interests are they protecting? Uh, well, the, those who uh, wanted to support the Copyright Directive as it was, they claim to be defending authors. What they are, in, in fact, defending is the, the big multinationals that uh, dominate in the copyright uh, industry and the collecting societies. And then on the other side, we had the big tech who were opposing this. And, but in the middle, we have all the individuals who, have, who are going to be affected by, by this new legislation. Regarding the vote, uh, we don't know what's going to happen. It seems that they are going to be able only to correct the, the record of the vote. So they're going to be able to say, OK, I should have been voting this. This is a mistake. But the vote will not be reopened, and uh, we will uh, stick to the text of the directive that was adopted yesterday. OK, Diego, uh, help us really, really break it down for us now. Because, I mean, consumers seem particularly yes. concerned about this law's effect on websites like YouTube. Uh, they think they're going to lose access mm -hmm. to huge amounts of content. So tell us what will happen when they search something on YouTube uh, that they want to see that cultural content you were referring to. What will happen? What will they not be able to view? <clears throat> Well, um, until now, the, all of these platforms, not only YouTube, but all of the other platforms operating online, uh, uh, work on the, this system called the notice and takedown. So they are not responsible. They are considered passive subjects. So unless they are notified that there is illegal content or copyright infringing content on their services, they don't have to act. They only have to act if they are being notified. Right now, with this directive, one is implemented in two years from now. Uh, all of these platforms will be obliged to scan each piece of content to have upload filters on their services and then discard and, uh, the content which is copyrighted or which they co could consider being uh, copyrighted. These algorithms uh, don't work properly. We have seen many examples of uh, algorithms not working, like, for example, uh, James Rose, the, pian the classic pianist, uh, recording himself playing back in his own living room. Bach is, of course, out of copyright uh, for uh, 250 years already. So he was recording himself, and the video was uh, uh, wrongly detected by Sony Music containing 37 seconds of, uh, of copyrighted music, and it was taken down by YouTube. So what we are going to see is less legal content online, more um, policing of the internet um, by these big tech companies that the uh, EU claims to, to be opposing. And generally, we're going to be a restriction of fundamental rights online because the incentive for companies is to avoid being sued. So if they can delete uh, 100,000 pieces of legal content, they will do that. Okay. Because if they allow only one copyrighted content without uh, um, having a license for it, they will be sued. So they prefer overblocking rather than, than not blocking enough. Right. Okay. Diego, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks so much uh, for clarifying that. Thank you.